a million cases. Maybe it's true up to the first million cases, but you can only publish the paper if it's true for the 10. So the obvious use of computers is to refute conjectures, and then you can publish the paper. Is it the so and so conjecture? It's a guy who made it, especially he's famous, then you have a good paper. The guy who made it not so famous, then maybe it's not so good by feel. So computers are obvious tools for disproving things. But what I'm interested in is not in the obvious use of computers to disprove things or alternatively to confirm conjecture. So there is a philosophy in the philosophy of science, a philosopher called Popper. And Popper claimed that in science, you can never verify something for sure. Because there are only scientific main indicators you can verify. No matter how many times you verified that, for example, F equals MA or E equals MC square, you made lots of experiments and you have verified it many, many, many times. It's still not a logical uh, proof. In fact, way back, David Hume, about 200 years ago, already raised great skepticism against the scientific method. He said thus that because the sun has risen every day for the last uh, 6,000 years, since the creation of the world at the time, or even less, 5,500 years, uh, that doesn't mean there is no logical proof whatsoever that it will rise tomorrow. We have no proof that it is. All we have is a heuristic <laughs> indication that it might rise tomorrow, uh, or may rise tomorrow, or rise tomorrow with a probability 99.999%. But you don't know that for sure. So already David Hume said, the invitation does not suffice. So Popper said, let's reverse it. Let's try to refute it. Scientists are very mean. One way to get glory is to be positive, to discover something new and interesting. But if you're not so creative, a better way is to refute the other guy's thing. Have experiments and try to refute it. So it's called refutism. So Popper, Karl Popper, basically is a whole philosophy of science. So this can also be also used in mathematics. Why, how do we know, how do we believe that the Riemann hypothesis is true? That the real part of the nth zero of the Riemann zeta function uh, is true. We try to find a counterexample and get famous. So Andrew Agisco and others wrote a program to compute the zeros, the non-trivial zeros of the so-called Riemann zeta function, and said that each and every one of them and looked at the real part. And they were hoping, really, really hoping. I'm sure Andrew Disco was really hoping to find a current example and to be super, super famous. <laughs> but he's not super, super famous, but he's moderately famous because he checked it for billion and billion of cases. And that's because you try to refute it very hard and 